Yuki finds out that his childhood friend, Hina, is dating someone else. Heartbroken, he runs away. He's mortified that he mistook her affection for love. He wants to disappear and never come back. A few weeks later, Yuki attends his first day at Shayu High School. It's almost time for class introductions and Yuki is wary of how his might affect his standing. The bubbly and energetic Kana goes first, followed by the gloomy and creepy Anya. Yuki wonders what sort of introduction he should give. He seems to take pride in being a gloomy background character, so he wants to give an unassuming stale introduction. When it is his turn, Yuki stands up and yells that he is quitting school. Mission accomplished. Yuki belatedly realizes the blunder he's made, but he doesn't feel too bad about it. He himself already thinks he's a weirdo. As he is questioned about his declaration, Yuki tries to brush it off. He tells everyone that he'll be pretending to sleep most of the time, and he doesn't mind if people badmouth him. Forget badmouthing. No one's going to talk to him at all at this rate. Yuki celebrates the fact that he won't make any friends. The teacher tries to talk Yuki out of quitting school, but he reassures her that school isn't the only thing in his life that he's wasted. Exhausted, the teacher tells Yuki to sit down as his classmates stifle laughter. Yuki's seatmate, Kuki, is so amused by Yuki's self-proclaimed normal self-introduction that he asks for his phone number. Yuki wants to know why Kuki is talking to someone gloomy like him. On the contrary, Kuki thinks that Yuki is the most interesting person in the room right now. Yuki internally believes that Kuki simply wants to turn him into an errand boy by having someone unremarkable like him nearby. Kuki intends to raise his own stock with the rest of the class. Yuki should have known a handsome guy like Kuki would never talk to him willingly. Yuki gets the jump on him by offering him some money, since he assumes that's what he wants. Kuki genuinely just wants to get along with him, so they exchange numbers. Afterwards, Kuki asks him if he's busy after school. Kana chimes in and reveals that some of them are having a little get-together after class. Yuki is almost terrified by how quickly this was all set up. As a symbol of respect, he offers to call Kana Elizabeth. They only invited him because of Kuki's questionable notion that he isn't weird. Kana shows that they've already invited quite a few other people, some of whom appear to be very awkward around Yuki. Yuki abruptly stands up and excuses himself from their hangout. He quickly paces out of the room to get as far away from those two girls as possible. The two girls in question are Hina, his childhood friend currently dating a senior, and Shiori, a kind girl he's afraid to muddy with his presence. Yuki knew they'd be at the same high school as him, but he didn't expect to meet them on the first day. After school, Kuki has his get-to-know-each-other party, consisting of six people. Minata and Takashi wonder why Yuki is so weird. Kuki reassures him that Yuki is interesting. The two played basketball against each other in middle school, though he doubts Yuki remembers him anymore. Shiori asks Kuki if he happened to have a match with Yuki. Realizing that she and Yuki knew each other already, Kuki asks her why Yuki didn't show up at the last tournament. Shiori refrains from answering that question. Kan asks her if she's good friends with Yuki, and Shiori explains that it's the opposite. Yuki likely hates her now. Shiori took an interest in Yuki during her second year of middle school. Both the men's and women's basketball clubs didn't take themselves seriously, but she saw how devoted Yuki was to improving his skills. His passion ignited the rest of the club, turning them into a local powerhouse with the potential to win a championship. Concerned that he wasn't taking care of himself properly, Shiori began to keep a closer eye on him. Not long after, Shiori confessed her feelings to Yuki. However, something happened that caused this confession to turn into the worst betrayal of Yuki's life. However, Hina is sure that she's the one who caused Yuki to turn out that way, so now it's become a contest to see who ruined his life more. Hina and Shiori start arguing with one another. Kana and Minata weren't prepared for drama on day one. They just wanted to sing. Hina explains that she's Yuki's childhood friend, and she claims that she's the one who changed Yuki. Before their catfight gets out of hand, Kana steps in and stops them. She asks them to get along and reminds them that this is a get-together. Shiori and Hina agree to leave instead. Kuki won't let a little drama spoil his party. He forces Takashi to sing a song. Meanwhile, Yuki is at the mercy of his sister Yuri, who heard that he made quite possibly the worst class introduction in the history of class introductions. He doesn't know how she found out, and he concludes that there must be a spy in class. Yuri asks him if this is related to Hina and Shiori, and when he refrains from answering, she knows that he is lying. He didn't expect her to know about Hina and Shiori either. Yuki uses the oldest trick in the Joestar book and runs away. Yuki is worried that he was a little too rude to Yuri. He wonders if Yuri is worried about him, but that can't be. Yuri hates him. Yuri is worried about him, and she doesn't hate him. 
She wanted him to have a wonderful and memorable high school life, but Hina and Shiori ruined everything. She'll never forgive them. On the other hand, Yuri thinks that Yugi hates her, probably because she yells things like guilty and death. Still, she blames herself for how he turned out like this. Ever since a certain incident, Yugi hasn't called Yuri's sister. Even so, Yuri resolves to protect him from those two other girls. The next day, those two other girls invited Yuki out to lunch. Yuki is being given the hardest battles. Yuki has always had terrible luck with women. His mother didn't raise him attentively. His sister hates him. Hina started dating someone else. He was bullied shortly after Shirei confessed to him. Needless to say, he has issues. He rationalizes his bad luck by convincing himself that this is punishment for some deeds he committed in another world. He considers himself incapable of forming bonds or showing empathy. Simply put, she's okay. He's broken. Thus, he doesn't understand why these two girls are fighting over him. Shiori and Hina argue over what the other is doing in front of Yuki's desk. Yuki doesn't care who wins. He doesn't want to go with either of them. He was just about to have his favorite kind of lunch, alone. Kuki breaks the noise by asking Yuki what club he intends to join. Shiori tries to get him to join the basketball club, of which she will be the manager. Yuki has fond memories of basketball. He put his heart and soul into it, but all he got from it was bad memories. He tells Shiori that he no longer plays basketball, which is a shocking revelation. She finds this a waste since she watched him try so hard in middle school. Yuki retorts that she knows just what happened after he put in all the effort. Yuki coldly asks her how long she plans to pity him like this. Shiori fumbles around in the dark for a response. Yuki cheerily remarks that he wasn't going to join any club anyway, since he's joining the go-home club. He stands up and heads to the cafeteria, where hopefully no one will disturb him. He wishes Shiori luck in being the manager, but he calls her by her last name, Kamashiro, instead. Yuki walks toward the cafeteria and notices the baseball club practicing outside. He remembers how he practiced that hard too. He no longer has the energy to play, but he doesn't mind. Right now, getting lunch is more important. Upon returning from the cafeteria, Hina is still there, waiting for him. He tells her that she shouldn't talk to him anymore, as their relationship isn't the same. When she asks him why, he replies that he'd feel bad for her boyfriend. Everyone in the class hears this. Yuki realizes that they aren't in middle school anymore, so he feels bad about exposing her like that in front of everyone. Hina tells him to forget about that, but Yuki insists. He wouldn't want his girl to be with another guy, either. Hina tries to argue with him, but Yuki doesn't get why. The moment she got a boyfriend, he considered it impossible for them to remain friends any longer. Yuki turns away and tells Hina to ask someone else for lunch. He liked her once, but he doesn't know if the same is still true. Hina is unable to say anything. Her classmates start gossiping about her supposed boyfriend. When one of them tries to recount what happened, Hina tells her to keep her mouth shut. She blames herself for what happened and how things turned out. A few days later, their homeroom teacher, Akira, tells them to group themselves into four for some outdoor classes. Yuki is unusually excited to be that kid in class who's forced to join a group. However, Kuki approaches him and invites him to team up. Yuki is nearly blinded by his good looks. Hina and Shiori insert themselves into their conversation, and just like that, they found four people for their group. A few days later, Yuki's class heads up to the mountains. Yuki steps forward ahead of the group, raises his arms and shouts Tartarus from the top of his lungs. It's going down now. Yuki is quite proud of himself for doing all that. He tells Kuki to quit looking at him, but it's hard not to after he pulled a stunt like that. Yuki has other problems too, like why Shiori and Hina are in their group. Yuki hikes well ahead of his group. Kuki tries to make small talk with him, but Yuki brushes it off, making the hike quite awkward. Yuki doesn't get why they'd all want to partner up with him as he considers his existence a hindrance to their sunny high school lives. They continue hiking up the mountain, sometimes stopping to play around with some fallen logs or weird trees. However, Yuki observes Hina hitting her foot on a large rock. As they stop for a short break, Yuki, who claimed he could not show empathy, shows empathy by asking her to take it off. Everyone looks at them funny. Hina doesn't want to do it here. She'd much rather take it all off when they're alone. Yuki doesn't want to see something so gross. He just wanted to see her feet. Yuki examines Hina's feet and notices that they have swollen up. He apologizes for making them go at such a high pace. He notices Hina has a troubled look on her face, so he reassures her that he doesn't smell. They go back and forth a few times before Yuki offers to smell it to prove that it doesn't. That isn't what Hina wants or needs. She tells him not to do that. Yuki does that. He's aware of how bad he looks right now, so he decides that if anyone reports him, he'll just turn himself into the police. Yuki treats Hina's feet with some bandages to help support her. 
He hands her a bottle of Pakari sweat and he walks away. However, Akira, barely hanging onto a thread, also asked him to treat her with bandages. Yuki is worried that she won't be able to participate in her future kids' sports festivals. Yuki calls Shiori over and offers to teach her how to bandage someone's legs, since she intends to be a sports manager. Yuki oversees Shiori's handling of Akira's tired, sore feet. When Yuki compliments her work, Shiori expects some form of reward. Yuki starts treating her like a dog, begging for a treat. Yuki digs into his bag, grabs a piece of candy, and throws it. To his surprise, Shiori goes after it like an actual dog. She returns with a piece of candy and expects to await a head pat for her troubles. Yuki reminds Shiori that she's not a dog. Shiori replies that she was just playing along. Since Shiori wants to be a dog so badly, Yuki decides to play the part of a dog breeder. He starts patting her head, but then he starts going for more. Shiori gets more than she bargained for. This isn't exactly what she had in mind, but she's not complaining. Shiori ends up more exhausted from being patted than from the hike itself. Shiori warns him that if he does this to anyone else, it will be considered harassment. Yuki takes this to mean that it should be fine with her. Shiori breaks out into laughter. It's been ages since they were able to exchange banter back and forth like this. She asks him if his arm has made a recovery, and he replies that it has. She doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Shiori looks anxiously to the side. There's no way she can do that. Yuki sees the look on her face and is reminded of why their relationship is the way it is now. They are no longer equals and it's as if their relationship has been frozen in time. Yuki and the rest of his class arrive at their destination. He retrieves a waterproof sheet from his bag for his group to use as a picnic blanket. Yuki takes the time to ask Hina if she's okay, and he offers a variety of first aid items that might help. Hina shouldn't be surprised, since Yuki often hurt himself during middle school. He's surprised she knew that. He replies that she's always been watching him. Yuki doesn't get why she's watching him. That's kind of creepy. Hina asks him why he bothered to help her, and he replies that it's because they're classmates. Hina raises her phone as if to show the teddy bear chain on her case. Yuki recognizes it and Hina is surprised that he still remembers. Yuki remembers it from the festival they went to. Hina remembers the festival fondly too. She had so much fun that day. Yuki asks her if something happened between her and her boyfriend. Hina finds it hard to answer that question. She asks him what he'd do if he accidentally hurt someone's feelings and that person would never forgive them. Yuki thinks it over and he remarks that he'd start over. If it's impossible to fix things with the person, Yuki thinks it would be best to start from scratch with them. Hina hadn't thought of it that way before. She smiles and thanks him for the advice. She stands up and apologizes for doing terrible things to him. She knows she should have apologized sooner, but she was afraid things would never be the same between them. Hina lowers her head, bows, and asks for his forgiveness. Yuki feels a bit bothered. He tells her that he doesn't remember her saying anything mean to him at all. He's the one who should be sorry, since he accidentally told everyone she had a boyfriend. Hina suddenly feels sick. She definitely said mean things to him, but Yuki has no concept of mean. To him, what she said back then was the truth. Thanks to her, he understood his place in the world. Yuki sees Hina tear up. If they hadn't met, she wouldn't be making that face right now. Yuki martyrs himself by sacrificing everything so that Hina can be happy. They're no longer friends, they're just classmates. As they file back into the bus, Hina notices that she's missing something. When Shiori asks her what it is, Hina explains that her phone strap must have fallen somewhere. Yuki tells her that her boyfriend can get her as many phone straps as she wants, and Hina snaps at him to stop bringing him up. Yuki doesn't see why she's so obsessed with the ugly bear. Nevertheless, he can't leave her alone like this. Hina feels bad over losing the bear, and she considers this karma for talking to Yuki. The bear is important to her because it symbolizes the time they spent together, but also because it was the last gift he gave her. Hina could get another one if she asked, but that's not the point. She wants that bear because of when she got it and who she got it from. She doesn't know what to do. Upon returning to school, Akira realizes that Yuki isn't in class. She asks the class if they know where he is, but no one knows anything. Hina feels like she knows where he is. Yuki walks all the way back to the mountain. He's only here because he's known Hina for forever, and he can't ignore a face like that. Hina stares longingly at a photo of herself and Yuki. She faces the facts. Maybe they can't go back to the way things used to be. She wonders if, if she tried a little harder, she and Yuki could have gotten together. She knows she can't really complain now, since it's her fault that their bond was broken to begin with. By some miracle, Yuki manages to locate Hina's bear strap on the mountain. He wonders when Hina will finally stop placing so much importance on the bear. 
especially since he's already thrown out or destroyed everything she's given him. As Yugi starts to head home, his weary legs finally give in, he starts falling over the mountain, and his life flashes before his eyes. He sees everyone important to him, his mom, Yuri, Hina, Shiori, and Kuki, for some reason. Yuki realizes he only knows like five people. In a flashback, a young Hina and Yuki attend a summer festival together. Hina wants some plum candy, but Yuki points out that she always gets the candid apple. Hina explains that she doesn't want to open her mouth too wide. Hina follows Yukita around the festival until they come across a shooting game stall. Hina wants the ugly looking phone strap, so Yuki <laughs> decides to win it for her. Yuki always found Hina slightly more annoying when they entered middle school, but he always believed that their relationship would become stronger over time, so he thought they'd come to this festival next year too. As the fireworks start, Hina tries to tell Yuki something. However, they are nearly swept away by the crowd, prompting Yuki to grab Hina's hand to keep her close by. However, Hina instinctively jerks her hand away from him and does her best to wipe her hand. To Yuki, this incident solidified the fact that they'd never be anything more than friends. He felt her rejection the moment she slapped his hand away. Yuki slowly opens his eyes. He's home. He managed to survive falling from a mountain, but it was the rain that did him in. He's been asleep for half a day, and he felt like he had the most nostalgic dream involving Hina. He sees the bear strap still on his desk, and he resolves to return it to Hina as soon as possible. The next day, Yuri comes by their class and asks to speak to Kuki. Hina briefly thinks that this might be a confession, but she knows that Kuki isn't Yuri's type. Hina sneaks away and follows them, knowing that this must be related to Yuki somehow. Yuri asks Kuki why Yuki came home so late last night, dripping wet no less. Hina puts the pieces together and realizes that Yuki went out and searched for her missing bear strap. Hina comes out of hiding and asks Yuri what happened to Yuki. Yuri stares coldly at her. She clearly doesn't want to talk to her. However, Yuri senses that Hina had something to do with Yuki's illness. Hina blames herself for what happened without explaining things first. Hina wants to apologize, but Yuri doesn't want to hear it. She storms out of the school and warns Hina not to go to their house. Meanwhile, Yuki makes a full recovery, but now he has two new problems. He's tired and hungry. However, he hears something loud coming from downstairs. Yuri bursts into his room without knocking. She'll come to regret that one day. Yuri checks on him to see if he's okay. Yuki asks her if she was talking to someone at the door, and she replies that it was just a newspaper salesman. Yuki accuses her of lying, which he instantly regrets. Yuki waves a literal white flag to signal his remorse. Yuri dumps several items on his bed to aid in his recovery. Yuki notices that all of the food is peach flavored. Yuri offers to do several things for him, such as buying him other things he wants, wiping away his sweat, or cooking him some porridge. Yuki laughs. He knows better than to trust her with the kitchen. He walks off to prepare his own food, and Yuri wants some too. Yuki checks his phone and discovers that Hina has left him hundreds of messages. He excuses himself and goes out to meet her. A few minutes later, Yuki reunites with Hina. Hina is relieved to see him safe and sound. Yuki realizes that she was the one Yuri chased away. Yuki doesn't remember her ever being this way. He gives Hina the ugly bear strap, confirming Hina's suspicions that he went out to look for it. Yuki and Hina walk home, which gives them a sense of nostalgia. However, Hina doesn't want to walk home just yet. Yuki still thinks this is about her feet, so he reassures her again that it doesn't smell. Hina yells at him in response, which is exactly the same Hina that Yuki knows and loves. He was worried that she had undergone a personality change. Hina asks him if he thinks she's changed. She asks him why he bothered to look for the bear strap, even though he's been avoiding her. He replies that he still wants to help her out regardless. It isn't because they're childhood friends, but because he just wants to. Hina wants him to be by her side at all times, but he replies that that isn't his responsibility. Hina admits that she and her boyfriend already broke up, their relationship didn't even last two weeks. She apologizes for keeping it a secret from him, but she wants to go back to being childhood friends again. Yuki apologizes. He can't do that. It isn't because he likes Shiori. It's because he just can't remember the feeling of loving her anymore. Hina tells him that she's liked him all this time too, and she wanted to give him an answer right away when he confessed. However, there were some things stopping her from doing that. Yuki pushes Hina away and coldly calls her a liar. Based on what she said, Hina dated someone she didn't like for two weeks, and she liked him all this time. Hina swears she isn't lying. She just doesn't know how to explain it. During middle school, Yuki was the most popular guy in school. He could do anything. Hina had a plan that involved dating one of her seniors, but in the end, her plan backfired, 
and more girls began to approach Yuki than ever before. Hina remembers her promise to Yuki that they'd always be by each other's sides. She doesn't expect him to remember that silly promise. Yuki kept his end of the bargain, but can Hina? Hina's legs won't move. She can't find her breath, and it feels like she's drowning. It'd be so simple to explain things, but she's too scared to tell him. She doesn't want to admit that she was jealous, and so she tried making him jealous in return. She's afraid that Yuki will hate her even more if she admits all this, but she knows she has to come clean. She has to start somewhere if she wants Yuki not to hate her anymore. Hina finds the resolve to lay it all bare. The next day, Yuri offers Yuki her hand, believing that he has to reimburse her for his medical supplies. Yuki hands her increasing amounts of money. This just irritates Yuri. She tells Yuki that she just wants to hold his hand since he just recovered from an illness. Yuki refuses, since he knows what'll happen if people see that. They get the wrong idea. Yuki walks to school, and people immediately notice something different. Many people realize that Yuri is with her brother, but they wonder why she's linking arms with him. Yuki wants to find out the reason for that, too. Yuki gets to class exhausted. Kuki jokes around with him about how he entered the school with his sister. Yuki mourns the loss of his uneventful, peaceful high school life, which barely lasted a week. Yuri suddenly jumps in her seat. She reasons that Yuki was offering her money as a sugar sister, and she wonders what he wanted her to do. Yuri's friend Meika worries about her. Meanwhile, a girl named Kayoka is called forward by a young man to the back of the school. He confesses that he likes her, but Kayoka turns him down. She doesn't know him at all. As they try to talk back and forth, they are unnerved by Yuki's presence. They politely ask him why he's here. Yuki explains that he just wanted a place to eat, so they're better off just ignoring him. The young man really can't do that. He gives up trying to convince Kayoka, and he leaves. Yuki is relieved that it'll be quiet again. Kayoka takes a seat next to Yuki, troubled by what just happened. She teasingly asks if he's here to confess to her too. She confides that she's been troubled by multiple confessions lately, which is interesting and all, but Yuki really doesn't remember asking. Kayoka feels a little insulted, but Yuki is more focused on the sweet buns he got from the store. Kayoka whines that Yuki should at least hear her out a little, and Yuki calls her an attention grabber. To him, that's a good thing, since it means no one will look at him. Kayoka is appalled by his lack of tact, especially when he doesn't even care about what her name is. Kayoka introduces herself as a second-year student. Yuki wonders why he didn't just get a cream bun instead. Yuki explains that he comes to this staircase once or twice a week to eat alone. Kayoka <laughs> remarks that she should come here more often. Yuki finds her troublesome, but in a good way. Kayoka gets up. She was feeling bad, but somehow talking to him made her feel a little better. Yuki wants to get paid a consultation fee for all his troubles. As she walks away, Yuki anguishes over the fact that yet another one of his peaceful spots is gone. On his way home from school, Yuki is caught in heavy rain. He notices a girl outside without an umbrella, unpacking her things. Yuki rushes over and helps her out. She thanks Yuki for his help, and he's all too eager too. He likes his girls a little bit older. Yuki helps the woman carry her boxes into her new apartment. She grabs them some refreshments and introduces herself as Saki. When Yuki introduces himself, Saki finds his name familiar. She takes a seat next to him, which makes Yuki a little nervous. He's seen this happen before. Saki confides that her engagement fell through because she had trouble conceiving. Yuki really doesn't know why women keep dumping him like this. Saki also shares that her ambitions to become a teacher failed, and Yuki cheers her up by saying plenty of people would like to have her as a homeroom advisor. Saki is happy that Yuki feels that way, and she looks forward to getting his parents. Saki might be moving a little too quickly. Saki grabs Yuki and literally drags him back to his house. His mother sees her and wonders if her son did anything bad to her. Yuki introduces Saki to his mother, Kori, but he really wants to leave as soon as possible. He doesn't even know why they have to hold hands. Saki offers to do anything for Yuki in exchange for his help. Yuki warns her that he's a healthy adolescent boy and being told anything better means anything. Saki doesn't mind. She grabs Yuki and presses him against her. Yuki's mother tries to get him to stop, but not even King Arthur could pull him out of that embrace. Yuki is satisfied. He had never experienced something like that before. Saki really feels like a mother, unlike a certain someone. Saki is happy she was able to help, but she's a bit saddened that it's all she can do. She excuses herself and leaves their house. Kori wonders when the last time she spoiled her son like that was. She blames herself for why Yuki turned out the way he did. She's worried that he thinks no one loves him and she'd be right. She shares that she's finally able to work from home, so she only needs to go to work once a week. 
Cory wants to salvage her relationship with her family, so she decides to start by making dinner. Yuri arrives home and goes straight to Yuki. She tells him to tell her if there's anything he needs done, as she won't need any money for it. Yuki has no idea what she means, but he decides to play along. He wonders if she needs more money, which Yuri misunderstands as him wanting to pay for her body. Even though she was against the idea at first, Yuri suddenly has no issues with it. She's willing to do it. No money is required. Cory asks Yuri to wash some vegetables, so Yuri asks what sort of detergent she should use. Yuki feels even more lost than before. The school principal looks outside and notices that the first years are having their physical examinations, and one of them is standing out. Yuki loses to Kuki in a foot trace, and at the same time, Shiori sets a new prefectural record. Shiori is gifted with natural athletic abilities, so Yuki finds it a waste that she isn't in any sports clubs. He checks in to see if she's okay. Shiori clearly isn't okay, but she says that she is anyway. Yuki remarks that she was always really good at lying. Yuki senses that he's ruined the mood somehow, so he leaves. Shiori admits that she forgot to eat breakfast that morning. As Yuki finds out more about her condition, her friends are impressed that he was able to notice that something was wrong with her. Yuki explains that when Shiori is healthy, her ponytails sway from side to side more often, almost like the wagging tail of a dog. Yuki advises her not to push herself too far, and he leaves. He feels satisfied with leaving her like that for now, but he can't help but worry. Later, Shiori is cornered by the women's basketball team. Yuki wonders if he's been reincarnated into a dating sim. The team gets him back to reality. Apparently, Shiori will only be the manager of whatever sports team Yuki joins. Yuki would love to point out that he can't exactly join the women's basketball team. To make matters worse, someone from the track team comes by to try and recruit him, since Kuki only agreed to join if he did too. The basketball club and track team start arguing over who gets to keep Yuki. Things become even worse as the soccer, tennis, and baseball clubs join in. Yuki considers this evidence of Japan's deep-rooted problems regarding population growth and prevailing socioeconomic conditions. With that said, it's time for him to run. Yuki retreats to class and Kuki has a big laugh over what happened to him. He sure hopes that this doesn't last any longer. Akira walks in and tells everyone to settle down. They'll be drawing lots to decide the permanent locations of their seats. Yuki ends up sitting right behind Minata. He talks to her using an exaggerated and stereotypical gal voice, though she tells him he doesn't have to speak like that. As they joke around, Takashi ends up joining them too. Yuki tells him that only gloomy people are around, but Yuki is in the minority here. After settling into their new seats, Akira reminds them all that their tests are coming up. She also remarks that due to three idiots from the go-home club, the sports club advisors have been making trouble in the faculty room. Yuki snaps at Anya not to cause any trouble for the teachers. Akira tells Yuki that he's the problem. Somehow, Yuki is shocked by all this. Yuki talks to his fellow idiots, Kugi and Shiori. Shiori asks Yuki if he can help her study for the upcoming exams. In the end, Yuki ends up holding a group study session with a few others from the class, even though it was just supposed to be the three of them. Shiori couldn't help but invite the others. Minata, Kana, Takashi, and Anya make up the rest of them. Hina is also joining, not as an idiot but because she's one of the few people with good grades. Yuki writes down a problem on the board and declares that it will be on the test, as it always has for the past four years. He managed to secure some of Yuri's old test papers, which let them know what to expect for the exams. Yuki dedicates most of the session to trying to predict which questions might come up. Shiori raises her hand and points out that a study session should be teaching them how to solve problems, not trying to figure out what questions to expect, Yuki sees that she has a point. However, he doesn't see a personal issue with this. He doesn't really have any problems with the material. Kuki also has no issues with academics, so Nada feels betrayed. Yuki also tries running away to Kana for emotional support, but she rather not. Hina gets tired of their horsing around, and she tells them all to focus. Yuki has always known that Hina was a natural teacher. Shiori asks Yuki for his help in solving a problem, so he gives her some hands-on guidance. As Yuki looks up, he notices that Hina and Shiori seem to be avoiding each other. He asks Kana if there's something between the two girls. Kana and Minata are amazed that Yuki can be so smart and so stupid at the same time. Hina and Shiori are clearly rivals. Eventually, their emergency study session draws to a close. This should be enough for them to avoid any failing grades. Yuki shares that he often heads to the park for some basketball and exercise to help refresh himself. He still plays ball, he just doesn't want to join a team. Shiori abruptly stands up and asks if she can come with him. 
Yuki sees no way this could backfire, so he lets her. 